Hey, what's up? David Cohen here for Learn Now Facts, and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to create the cinematic trailer title like the one from the Eternals trailer inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the project settings, and that's the gearbox over here. And you want to make sure that your timeline resolution is 1920 by 1080 HD and your timeline frame rate and playback frame rate are 24 frames a second. And I'm just going to click on cancel because I already set this up before, but you're going to want to click on save. So now I want to create a new fusion composition. So right click on the media pool and select new fusion composition. And five seconds long should be fine and frame rate 24 frames a second. And I'm just going to call this title and I'm going to click on create. So I'm going to drag this composition onto the timeline. And I want to make this a little bit larger so I can see what's going on. And I want to select the composition and make sure that the playhead is over it and we can head over to Fusion. So once we're in the Fusion tab, I'm going to grab this media out node and drag it to the corner where it won't be getting in our way and we can start making our animation. So I'm going to drag this text plus node from the, view, from the toolbar and I'm going to view it. And right now we're using a single viewer, but a little bit later we're going to be using a dual viewer too. So just make sure that this is set to single viewer, not dual viewer. And I'm just going to type the title here and, that, and all caps by the way, so make sure caps lock is on. I'm just going to type the Eternals. Alright, we can turn caps lock off now. So we want to use the font that was used in the original title, in the original trailer. Even though the trailer was kind of boring, I didn't really like it. But, uh, but the titles there were very nice and I liked the way, I liked the font and the way that they were animated. I'm not sure how the film is going to turn out at the end. It, the trailer looked like uh, really bored. I'm not sure. I don't think it's going to be very nice. I mean, it's kind of hard to bring something new after the end game. So I'm going to select the Caesar font and I'm going to put actually KSR, I guess. So I'm going to put the link to this in the description. It's a free font. You can get it on thefont.com. It's a great site where you can get lots of different kinds of fonts. And this one very closely matches the one that was used in the trailer, even though they customized the font a little bit. They created some custom shapes, like in the O when they wrote November, they put a little custom shape in there. But this, I'm pretty sure this is the font that was used in the trailer. So I wanna bring the size up to 0 0.11. It's a, uh, pretty nice size and I like using round numbers I don't like to use like the with lots of decimal points so I'm gonna go to frame 0 and I'm gonna set a keyframe on the tracking and I'm gonna go to the last frame of the composition and I'm also gonna set another keyframe here and a little a little trick here if you click this arrow kind of small it's gonna take you back to the previous keyframe so my previous keyframe was on frame zero. So just gonna move the playhead back to that keyframe. And if I click this one, it'll move to the next keyframe. So this is a nice little trick when you're animating, if you don't wanna take your mouse and drag the, the playhead all the way back. So at the first frame, I wanna bring the tracking up maybe to 1.1. That's actually a little bit too much, so maybe 1.05. I want it to be subtle, I don't want it to be don't want it to be too much. That's pretty good. But this is a linear animation, so we have to play with the curves. So open your spline editor, and that's the tab over here. And one thing in the spline editor that I learned recently is that if you click these three dots and check select show selected tool only, this one, then you don't have the whole list of, um, of tools that you have in the flow that are animated. And it's a lot cleaner and easier to work with. So I'm just going to select this text one character spacing. That's the same as tracking, by the way. And I'm going to click this full screen. It's just, it's just a fit button, actually. So it makes it zoom to fit. So it makes it easier so we can see all of the points that are animated. And I'm going to select these two points. 
and click Shift S, and that will make the animation smoother. So now we have a smooth animation, and you want to make sure that you do all of your animating before you add the bevel profile because it'll be easier to preview. And after you add the bevel, like we're going to do now, it's going to be harder to uh, to think of how this is going to look. So now. I want to add some bevel to this, so I'm going to add a blur node from the toolbar. And you want to blur it by one pixel, no more than that. I wouldn't want to blur it more than one pixel. And this basically creates a little bit of a height map. If I turn on the black like options and uh, turn off checkout underlay, you'll see it's a bit of a height map like that. So if you want the playback to be faster, you can right click on this bar over here turn off high quality and turn off motion blur and that'll make the preview faster so we can play that all right and with this height map i want to create a bump map so control space bar search for bump map and make sure that you are using create bump map and not the uh, regular bump map so i'm just going to add that so if I view this, you're going to see that it creates sort of an illusion of height. So I want to bring the height scale, maybe three, but no higher than that. I want it to be like a really soft bevel. And after this, I am going to add a displace node. Control space bar, search for displace. And I want this to be my displacement map. So I'm going to right click over the output of the create bump map tool and pipe it over the node of the displace. And I want it to be the foreground. And as a background, I'm going to be loading this reflection map. And you can get this for free it's with the project files in the description below. And there's only one problem. The problem is that this reflection map is 3840 by uh, by 2160 and that is 4k we don't want to be working with a full 4k reflection map because our comp is 1920 so we're going to have to scale this down so i'm just gonna control space bar search for a scale i'm gonna add that and i'm gonna view it and i want to scale it by 0.5 so the way the scale works is it multiplies multiplies the width and the height by this size so actually not 0 0.05 0.5 actually it was supposed to be 0 0.5 so the way it works is it multiplies the width and the height by this size here so 3840 times 0 0.5 is half of 3840 so that's 1920 and 2160 times half that is 1080 so I'm going to view that and now we have our reflection map in the right size so i'm going to pipe this into the input of the displays i'm going to view it and you won't see much happening right away because we haven't played with the displays yet i want to change the type from radial to xy and i want to bring the x offset to minus 0 0.5 y offset to minus 0 0.5 and the x and wire refraction up like that and that looks pretty good it's kind of hard to see our whole bevel profile here and i think i might want to scale this reflection map a little bit you won't really see the tiling but uh, it'll make it look a lot sharper so i'm just gonna change the edges to mirror and i'm gonna bring the size to 0.25 this looks bad now, but once we cut out the text, you won't even be able to see the tiling because the text is so thin. It'll be very hard to see the tiling. So let me cut out the text and the way we're going to do that, we're going to need a mat. So we're going to add a brightness contrast node from the toolbar. And you can also control space bar search for brightness contrast. But I'm going to view that and as we can see, nothing really happens. Because when you go to the settings and I'm going to select a multiply by mask and I'm going to pipe this original text before it was blurred into the mask input of 
the brightness contrast and now we have our beveled text and it looks very nice so we have like this very nice font with the beveled text so there's one more thing i want to do we animated the text but i also want to animate the reflection a little bit so i'm going to go over to this transform node i'm going to view it at frame zero i'm going to set a keyframe and then at the last frame of the comp at frame 119 i'm just going to drag it a little bit i don't want it to move too far because remember we scaled this so let's play this and see how it looks so this looks pretty good i'm pleased with this and if we look at our text now we can see that the reflection is going to be moving and this is exactly what we want so not too many nodes used to create this very nice looking bevel profile i like the way it turned out but we need to take this we need to bring this another step higher so let's let's keep going and in the eternal trailer it was um the text was gold not silver so so let's increase the value of this text so i'm gonna add color curves and that uh, increased value thing was a joke by the way so with the color curves i'm going to unselect i'm gonna uncheck blue alpha and green and i'm just gonna leave the red i want to create a point right here in the middle and i'm gonna pull it up a little bit like that you don't want to go too far just a little bit and click shift s on your keyboard to make a nice smooth curve and i'm going to uncheck red and check green create another point to make sure it's in the middle pull it up not too much just a little bit has to be less than red and i'm going to uncheck green and i'm going to check blue and i'm going to pull this down and again shift s make it smooth and this is looking pretty good we have our nice gold text that was pretty easy so now we have our text i want to create a little bit more i want to create a nice little smoke going on here like in the trailer so oh yeah one more thing that we forgot to do is this transform when we when we animated the center we forgot to add some easing to the animation so i'm gonna click uh, i'm gonna open the spline editor and as you can see, since we have show selected tool, show only selected tool, we can see the transform. And we don't have to look at all the other nodes that we animated. So I'm gonna click this fit button and I'm going to select these two keyframes on the keyboard, shift S, and that makes the animation smooth. And now we have a smooth animation on the reflections. So these are not real reflections. If you wanna use an HDRI map, you would do this a little bit differently. I'm just going to show you this just as an exercise, but it's not going to, we're not going to be using this in our title. So I have a reflection map here. This came with the uh, kick ass shaders, which is a free plugin from reactor. So as you can see here, it has a nice Chrome here. This is the Chrome and I'm just going to add a bump map tool, a real bump map, not a create bump map and after our bump map here this is our bump map i'm gonna pipe it into this bump map as an image input and i'm gonna change the type from height map to bump map and i'm going to pipe this into the bump map texture of the uh, reflect of the chrome reflect and here we have our text and if you want to cut it out we would use a booleans channel booleans 3d of course so 3bol and I will take this original text, pipe it in here, and I would change the operation to A times B, A times B, A times B, like that. And for the alpha, I would check red. So now we have this. And if we view this on an image plane, we would be able to see as if it's a 3D reflection going on here. So here it is, we have, our, we have our reflection. So we can use a real reflection map this way, but we're not going to be using it today because it's slower to render. We're gonna fake it the way that we did right now. But this is a nicer way to do it. Of course, this is all an illusion. 
because the bump map does not really change the geometry. This is still flat. It just looks like it has some curves on it. But if we look at it like this, you'll see that it's flat. It's a two-dimensional plane. So this is a nice way to do it. We can blur the reflection map, but I'm not going to be doing this today. I'm just going to I just want to show you that. If you want a tutorial on how to make a title using this method here, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a tutorial about that. But I'm just going to get rid of this and we're going to get back to our smoke and our title here. So here is our title, our text at least, and I'm going to move the media out node again. And I'm going to move down here and start creating our smoke. Actually, I might want to want to do it up here because it's an overlay. So I'm going to start off with a fast noise. And this isn't going to be just some cheap fast noise smoke like you see in many videos. They just mask out some fast noise and create smoke. No, we're not going to be doing that. I want to bring up the scale a little bit. And let's see if we invert it. Will it change? Will it look better? Not really. So after this, I'm going to add a P image emitter, which is a particle emitter that takes an image as an input. And the main difference between a P image emitter and a particle emitter set to an image input as the, as, the, as the region of the particles is that the particle emitter creates particles on every frame, but the P image emitter creates a number of particles on the first frame and doesn't create any more on the, for the rest of the frames. They just have a long lifespan. So the particles that you saw on frame zero are the same particles that you'll see on frame 100 or till the end of the animation at least. So that's why we use P image emitter because it has like a more, it looks a lot better when you add P turbulence to it. So I'm gonna add a P render and I can grab that from the toolbar here, P render. And we're gonna preview this in 3D, but we're going to render it in 2D, see? With the output mode is set to 3D, but once we're done, we're gonna change it to 2D. So it can be a little bit slow, and that's because we have so many particles here. And in the P image emitter, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the X density to 0.3, and the Y density to 0.3. And now we can move a lot around a lot easier because we have less particles to work with. Of course, the less particles you have, the more noisy your smoke is gonna be. So if you have a stronger computer, I'd say go, go for it, use, uh, like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 for the X and Y density. Just make sure that you bring the brightness down after you render because the more particles, the, the brighter your smoke is gonna be as well. Because I think the particles just get added to each other later. So between the P image emitter and the P render, I'm going to add a P turbulence. And I want to bring the density up just by a little bit, not too much, like that. So if we play this from frame zero, we can see that we have this interesting animation. But you can see this is going to cut off at about frame 100, it's just going to stop, watch. There it is, we passed frame 100 and it stopped, and, you'll, and you can guess why, because the P image emitter has the lifespan set to 100 frames. So if we want it to last to the end, we need to set it to 120 frames or whatever length your composition is. But I only want the smoke to be visible from about 24 frames until not even 100 frames, maybe even 70, 78 frames, 80 frames, somewhere here in the middle. I don't want it to be at the beginning. I don't want people to see it at the beginning and I don't want it to be visible at the end. So I'm just going to leave it there. It'll render faster anyway. So we still have one problem that at the beginning is completely flat and I don't want it to be like this because it's kind of boring. It has doesn't look anything like smoke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the P renderer and this pre generate frames. I'm going to set maybe to 35 and it's going to take a while to refresh here. But now it's going to start. It's going to look already like this. And by the time we want it to be visible, it already looks like smoke and now it becomes very turbulent and then it's just gonna fade out. So this is basically what we want. So now that we're done animating this, I wanna change the output to 2D. And now we have 2D smoke, more or less. It's kinda hard to see because uh, the particles get added together so, so they're very crisp. 
and any bit of anti-aliasing will make this look a lot better. So watch when I add a blur of only one pixel, you'll be able to see a lot more detail. So just watch. There. You can see the difference that one pixel of blur made, like a radius of one. It just adds a little bit of anti-aliasing, but it makes it look a lot better. Of course, this noise is, this, uh, this fog is very noisy, this smoke is very noisy. So I want to bring the blur radius to about 5, I think that's the sweet spot for this, because uh, 3 is too noisy, and as you can see we still have some noise. You can choose to leave it at 3 if you want, and like 7 is already too much, it's too blurry, you lose the detail. It is soft, you don't have any noise, but you lose detail. So I think 5 is about the perfect spot for this, where we keep detail and we lose the noise. So. I'm gonna keep it at about here and remember at this part of the animation where we don't even want this to be visible so it's gonna start at about here play until probably about 80 and then it'll fade out so I'm going to add a again I'm gonna add a brightness contrast and I'm gonna do the same thing for the set math I'm gonna go to the settings and I'm gonna multiply by the mask and I'm just gonna grab an ellipse node here I'm gonna pipe it in and see it cut out it cut the whole thing out around the mask so I'm just gonna make the mask smaller I'm gonna soften the edge like that that's good now I want to animate the uh, the opacity I guess of the smoke you can say so when you're animating opacity you always want to make sure that you're looking at your uh, at your checkered underlay so our smoke doesn't have an alpha channel, so that really isn't important. But uh, I can just bring down the gain, I guess. If I bring the gain down, you'll see we still have this black here. It's very hard to see, but this is the alpha channel of the uh, of the smoke. If you can see it, how can I get you to see it? I can get a white background, and I can merge this on top of it, and you'll be able to see it. Yeah, so there it is. You can still see the alpha channel of the smoke even though we brought the gain all the way down. So the way to get rid of this is we can go to the brightness contrast node and we need to click this A. So now the alpha is also going to get multiplied by zero and it becomes an opacity. So the gain becomes an opacity slider from zero, from one to zero. So if we look at our white background now, we'll see that there is no residue left from the smoke. So we made it completely disappear. So let's animate this. I'm gonna go to frame zero, set a keyframe at zero, frame 24, I'm gonna bring it to one. And at frame 80, I'm gonna keyframe it at one. You know, I'm gonna keyframe it at zero on frame 80. And at about 72, I'm gonna bring it back to one. So here's our animation. The smoke is gonna appear. It's gonna play and then it's gonna slowly disappear. So that's pretty nice. And I'm just gonna merge it on top, drag the output of this final node of the smoke on top of the output of the final node of the text. And Fusion will automatically create a merge node. And again, we'll have to turn on the checkered underlay to be able to see what we're doing. So let's play this here. So now we can see our smoke and it's kind of hard to, to see the details. I want to bring maybe the gamma down by a little bit, got a little bit of sharpness, maybe bring the contrast up. I want it to be very subtle so you can hardly see it. Maybe make it a little bit noisy like Chris, sometimes you see like smoke that has like these large particles of uh, carbon in it. So maybe bring the blur down to, I don't know, let's try three, see if that helps. Yeah, so now we have this very crisp smoke. Alright, I think this is pretty good. We have our text animating, we have our smoke appearing. 
this is also pretty good. So the last thing I want to add here is a lens flare and that is completely optional. Uh, and we're going to be doing this with the, our lens master flares plugin. And we have a preset here that I was practicing with before that I showed in the preview. And once you have lens master flares on the, uh, on the flow, we can click browse presets and I'm going to go to Magico and I want to select this one, this Neverland one. And I'm going to send that to the viewer. So it's kind of small. So I'm going to change the position to 0.5 and 0.5 and that's the center of the screen. Of course, we don't want it to be there. I'm just putting it here for now. And I'm going to rotate it to 90 degrees. And now I'm going to slide it down till it touches the bottom of the text, more or less. I got just a little bit lower. And I want to click this edit preset element. This is a little bit complicated, so stay with me here. Every Lens Master Flares preset is made up of a bunch of core elements. So the core elements have the properties that can be edited. So I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to click this uh, edit preset elements again. So if we click this button, we can click on all of these elements and change the individual properties of every element. So I'm going to go over to Glow 3 and I'm going to bring the size, the Y size down. I'm going to go to Glow 2. And I'm going to bring the, X, the Y size down. And in Glow 1, I want to bring the Y size up to make the streak longer. So, so I'm going to include a PNG of this lens flare in the project files so people who don't have the plugin can use it. And I'm just going to change the color of the, uh, of the lens flare so we can get like something that matches the text, maybe something closer to yellow. And now we're pretty close. I want to maybe bring the saturation down to uh, maybe 0.3. The value also might want to bring down to 0.5, something like that. So we have this nice lens flare here. Maybe change the position a little bit. All right. And I'm going to go to frame zero and I'm going to animate the size here. And I'm going to go to frame probably 24, bring the size back. I'm going to bring it to one and at zero, I want it to be zero. And I only want it to fade probably at from frame a hundred. I want it to go become zero again. Because this whole thing, the whole text animation is going to disappear. I wanted the whole text and the flare and the smoke to appear and then slowly disappear towards the end of the animation. So let's do that. I'm going to add, let's play with this a little bit. I'm going to add a brightness contrast after the text, before the text gets merged with the smoke. And I'm going to go frame zero. And I'm going to animate the gain, bring the gain to zero. And I'm going to go to frame probably about 16, bring the gain back to one. So let's play that, see how it looks. It is pretty slow, it's lagging, but we can see this title coming out of the shadows. The lens flare appears with the nice light and the smoke. It just looks like uh, the dawn, right? So we have our title going on here. All right, so it comes on pretty smooth. And now we want it to fade out. So the lens filler, we already made it fade out. And text also. So I'm going to go to frame 100, keyframe the game. And frame 120, I'm going to bring it to zero. So the whole thing disappears by then. So let's go back and play this from the beginning. It is pretty slow. It is kind of hard to play, but it comes on pretty nice. And, and let's see it fade. Takes a while to up, update here.
Yeah, so it's looking pretty nice. But there's only one thing that we forgot to do. And that is we forgot to smooth the animation in this brightness contrast and the size of the animation of the lens flare. So I'm going to select this brightness contrast, which controls the uh, the bright the opacity of the text. So here we have these two linear curves because uh, this is at the beginning and this is at the end. So I'm just going to select these two, shift S, and then these two and shift S. So now we have a smooth animation. And the same thing for the size of this Neverland preset. We can get rid of this lens master flares node. We only need, we only need it at the beginning to add a preset. And then once we already add a preset, and if we want to add another one, each preset has the open the browse presets button. So we can just browse presets from within preset. And I'm gonna select this node and I'm gonna go to the spline editor. And we have the same thing here where the size comes on. I'm just gonna control, select these two points, shift S to uh, to smooth them, and also control S, by the way, you wanna make sure that you save your work. And the same thing with this curve here, shift S, and we can close the spline editor. And now, when we're done with our animation, the, and I'm pretty sure we are done, actually, these are not that many nodes that I was expecting to use way more. And I think I did use way more in the original preview. So I'm just going to pipe this into the media out node. And what this does is this connects it, makes it like a global uh, connector. It connects it to the edit page and the delivery page and I think maybe even the color page. So now this lets us access this. We can render this out here and we can preview it in the edit page with the rest of our stuff. So let's see. If this if this appears here, it takes uh, takes a couple seconds to get here, and here it is. So the smoke is still a little bit noisy. You can play with the blur to you get it the right spot. Maybe we can we can bring it back to five. I just like the crispiness that was there. This isn't really that big of a deal. These are just the finishing touches. So yeah, here. And I'm going to bring the size maybe five. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so that looks way smoother. And we have our text here and everything looks very nice. So that's about it for today, guys. I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. So until next time, I'm David Cohen, and this is Learn Now Effects.